Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode is a trio of books for the Call of Cthulhu game, kinda. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The first one we're going to talk about is Cthulhu Britannica. This is produced by Cubicle 7. It is licensed by Chaosium. And the basic point of it is, these are adventures that are specifically set in England. I have trouble reviewing adventure books. I've established this before because I feel like I can either read the back and give you the Cliff's Notes, and then you're going, well, all he's done is read the back of the book. He doesn't really know what's going on. Or I can tell you what's happening in the book, and then it's all, well, he gave us all the spoilers. I don't know why he's doing this at all. So I have to walk a fine line here. One of the neat things about this particular book is, like I said, it's all set in England, and every one of them is in a slightly different time period. For example, there's the first one, the bad company starts out in Victorian England, then you move into the 30s in Darkness Descending, Wrong Turn is a contemporary game, King takes place in the near future, you know, probably like the day after tomorrow, and then my favorite one of these is My Little Sister Will Make You Suffer. I can't tell you any more about this adventure other than that that one alone is worth the price of admission for this book. Th that is one of the, it, I, it is one of the coolest games I have one of the coolest games for Call of Cthulhu I have ever read in my life and I've got a substantial library of Call of Cthulhu stuff and there is just something about that adventure that really makes me just it, I dig it. And I, I, re I really do. And, and I'm a big fan of Cthulhu in general. Next up is The Laundry, also by Cubicle 7. For those of you who feel like this is familiar, and this is not about pressing shirts and using bleach. I get that question a lot when I talk about this. The Laundry Game is based on The Laundry Files by Charles Strauss. The, this is a different point of view on the governmental reaction to the mythos than you've seen in Delta Green, than you've seen in the fiction work, The Spiraling Worm, principally because this is all British. This is an absolutely hysterical book to read if you like very dry British humor, which I happen to do. This isn't anywhere near Monty Python. This is more irony and you raise your eyebrow like, really? What this game presents you with is this incredibly Byzantine organization part of the British Intelligence Service. This very Byzantine organization with all these different levels that you have to interact with and you have to get permission to do something. So it's like you're saving the world on a daily basis, but make sure you save your receipts because otherwise you won't get reimbursed for the trip. It's, it's things like that that really make this great. Some of the divisions that you deal with are counter-possession. There are also ideas in here like since... Most mythos spells require certain schools and certain types of thinking that's damaging to the human brain. Why don't we give it to a computer to do? So what you could do, if you really wanted to, was you could take your iPod or your iPad or your Palm Pilot or your Blackberry or whatever your little portable device happens to be and use this to whistle up Azatoth if you really wanted to. I don't recommend doing it and there, there are limitations. That was a bit of a exaggeration. You might get a lesser servitor of the Outer Gods. But either way, it is a really neat take on that sort of thing. The, the whole techno wizardry and why it works the way it does is great. And the fact that if you try to do it with your brain and you screw up, chances are you're going to get fried. There are sort of minor write-ups for each one of the characters that you can interact with in the book. I will leave you with reading through one of these directly from this because I found it amusing. His name is Frederick Ironsides and his position is residual human resource. Formerly an accountant, and for that matter, formerly alive, Frederick Ironsides is a testament to the importance of paying attention during safety demonstrations. During a course in computational demonology, he stepped over the line of the summoning grid and, well, Fred's dead. Waste not, want not, Fred is presently here as an example of the laundry's reuse of personnel. Today, Fred is gainfully employed in a variety of positions in the organization, such as night watchman, door guard, shelf stacker, um, draught excluder, cannibal, and hat stand. Please note that pursuant to HR directives on seasonal cheer, employees are to refrain from decking the zombies with tinsel. This is the sort of humor you run into in this book a lot. It also gives you an idea on how... Um, the other nationalities may be dealing with it and the fact that America seems to have gone really off the deep end with it from their point of view. 
it is distinctly separate from Delta Green. Because Delta Green was the first book of this genre that I ever sort of wrapped my brain around, I compare everything else to it. Is it better? Is it worse? It's just as good. It's just different. The main th reason I said kind of Cth Call of Cthulhu kind of is this is technically based on BRP, not directly the Call of Cthulhu engine. What's the difference? Not very much. Finally, by Chaos Me itself, Cthulhu Invictus. Short but sweet here. This is doing Call of Cthulhu in the Roman era. So what it does is it sets you up with the, the Kingdom of Rome and a lot of the information about the Kingdom of Rome. And, oh, sorry, the Empire of Rome. Sort of how, you, how your character can fit into that, how it can, how, you know, what role your character can play, and then finally, how the mythos plays into the whole thing. For example, I give you this idea. What if, instead of Rome burning while Nero is fiddling, which we all know is apocryphal, what if he was actually fiddling up Cthulhu? And Cthulhu was descending upon Rome at the time, which is why everything burned. Just one of those ideas to kind of throw out there for you. Maybe it's a bunch of uh, fire vampires. I don't know. Either way, though, what this does is it expands the different eras in which you can play Call of Cthulhu. And just to prove that I lie to you every now and then, we're going to throw in a bonus book for you here. Basic Role Playing Rome, also put out by Cubicle 7. What this is, is it's less of a mythos point of view. And I got to tell you, folks, back to this one for just a second. Check out this cover. This cover creeps me out like very few Call of Cthulhu covers do, mainly because of just the mosaic of that star spawn on the cover there. But anyway, back to Rome. This is more of a treatise on how to role play in the Roman Empire, including things like gladiatorial combat, fighting the Picts up in England, etc., than necessarily a straight up mystical point of view. Are there some weird and supernatural critters in here that you can interact with? Sure, it wouldn't be a role-playing game if there wasn't something weird. I've never known anyone that would just play a completely historical game. So, along those lines, what this gives you is a really, really good background on the Roman Empire, on a lot of facets about it. And I would admit, up until reading this, my Roman Empire foo was really weak. I now know enough about it to know that it could be a very interesting era to play in, and it plays it fairly straight. It doesn't, it gives you some option for weirdness if you really want it, but it's not like Cthulhu Invictus or Roma Imperius, which obviously puts in there for you there's supernatural going on. Hell, Roma Imperius is, a, is an alternate history game. That there's something supernatural going on and you're off and running. These are a series of books, all of which using the either Call of Cthulhu or basic role-playing engine for your purposes. Cthulhu Britannica, set mainly in England. The Laundry, if you want your intelligent service dealing with the mythos, but in a creepy kind of way, but funny, here you go. Cthulhu Invictus for straight-up Roman Call of Cthulhu. And basic role-playing Rome, if you want to use the percentile engine in the, the empire that once ruled the world. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.